Chapter 10, Applications of Linear Algebra, Section 10.1, Constructing Curves and Surfaces Through Specified Points. A homogeneous linear system with as many equations as unknowns has a trivial, a non-trivial solution if and only if the determinant of the coefficient matrix is zero. Let's take advantage of this theorem to find uh, some equations for some through different curves and surfaces. So first we'll start with the line. The line with the equation c1x plus c2y plus c c3 equals zero that passes through two distinct points x1, y1 and x2, y2 is given by this determinant equation because if it uh, is equal to zero and we have that uh, c1 and c2 and c3 are not all zero then in order for this thing to pass the points and have a non-trivial solution the uh, determinant of this coefficient matrix must be zero and therefore right over there we have the equation of that line so what we can do is we can use that to find for example, the equation line that passes through uh, these two points right over here. So all we have to do is write out the top row, x, y, 1 for general x and y, and then we'll plug in 2, 1 for the first point. We'll keep the 1 in the last column, and then our second point is 3, 7, and then we'll keep the 1. We take that determinant and set it equal to 0. So by taking this determinant, we can get negative 6x plus y plus 11. So that must be 0, and that's the equation of our line. We can also come up with an equation for a circle. So the circle that has equation with some constant times x squared plus y squared plus some constant times x, some constant times y, and a constant is equal to zero that passes through three non-collinear points is given by this determinant equation. So it's just built out of the coefficients. Notice that if we just had like a standard circle x squared plus y squared equals one, we'd only really be worrying about this, but in general we could move a circle anywhere in the coordinate plane, so we have to accommodate for that. In any case, let's find the equation of the circle that passes through these three points. Okay, so what we'll do is we will use this formula for the circle. We'll write x squared plus y squared, and we'll write x, y, and 1 for the uh, general x and y, and then we'll do it for the first point, 1, 7. So 1 plus 7 squared is 49, so 50. 1 plus 49 is 50 and x is 1, y is 7, and we have 1. Then our next point is 6, 2, so we get 40, because 36 plus 4, and x is 6, y is 2, we keep the 1, and then the last point gives us 52 when we square them and add them. x is 4, y is 6, keep the 1, take this determinant, set it equal to 0. Okay, how about to take the determinant, we could um, do a cofactor uh, expansion. So I'll take uh, x squared plus y squared, and I'll multiply by this determinant. So this determinant is 28 plus 22 minus 40, and we'll multiply that by x squared plus y squared and then we'll subtract off uh, x times this determinant. So that's subtracting off uh, 136 plus 64 minus 180 times x. Add that to the next determinant uh, with the matrix corresponding for y for that cofactor. So we have minus 152 minus 148 plus 260 times y, and the last uh, one, the one, gives us a determinant of 1400 minus 136 minus 1064. So that must be zero. Okay, so we have, let's collect our terms a little bit. We'll end up with 10 times x squared plus y squared minus 20x 
minus 40y minus 200 equals 0, which is the same thing as x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 5 squared. If you just uh, group your terms together, complete the square. So that's just a circle that has center 1, 2, and radius equal to 5. So you can see how this is a little bit annoying to do by hand, but for a computer or something, it could be pretty efficient. Just compute this thing, and then there you go, you have your equation. The conic section that has this monster equation right over here and passes through five distinct points and all of these guys is given by this determinant equation. So you can see where this is going. You can kind of continue to generalize these things. As an example, we have uh, an astronomer who wants to determine the orbit of an asteroid about the sun and they set up a Cartesian coordinate system in the plane of the orbit with the sun at the origin. Astronomical units of measurement are used along the axes, where one astron astronomical unit is equal to the mean distance of Earth to the Sun, which is equal to 93 million miles. By Kepler's first law, the orbit must be an ellipse, so the astronomer makes five observations of the asteroid at five different times and finds five points along the orbit to be as listed. Let's find the equation of the orbit. So we'll use the monster determinant over here. And I'll just write it out, x squared, x, y, y squared, x, y, 1. And for squaring the first point, first x value, the first point, we get 64.401. Multiplying the x and y coordinates together, we get 66.688. And then for y squared, it's 69.056. x is 8.025. y is 8.310. And we have our 1 as per usual. And I'll just uh, keep filling things in. For the next point, we get 103.429, 64.68. Three eight six ten point one seven zero oh, six point three five five and of course one then one twenty five point four eight five thirty five point nine eight one ten point three one seven eleven point 202, 3.212, 1, 115.262, 4.026, 0.141, 10.736, 0.3751, 82.664 minus 20.612 5.139 minus 2.267 and 1. We'll take that determinant, set it equal to 0. I uh, am not going to show the work. I just used a uh, calculator to do this determinant, a computer algebra system, and got 386.802x squared minus 102.895xy plus 446.029y squared minus 24. 76 dot four four three x minus fourteen twenty seven dot nine nine eight y 
minus 17109.375 equals 0. So that's some sort of conic section that passes through these five points. And that's the equation of our orbit. The plane in three space with equation given over here. Notice now we have a z variable that passes through three non-collinear points in three space. So now we have z's is given by a determinant equation that has a z in it. Okay, cool. So we can use that to find the equation of the plane that passes through the three points given over here. We'll start with our determinant equation. So x, y, z, 1, and then our first point, 1, 1, 0. We'll put a 1 in the last column. Then 2, 0, minus 1, 1, and then 2, 9, 2, 1. Okay, we'll take that determinant and set it equal to 0. And how about we cofactor expand? So we'll start with x. So that'll be x times this determinant. So that's negative 3 plus 9 times x minus uh, y times the next determinant is negative 3 plus 6 plus 9 for the next determinant for z, and we subtract off the last determinant, uh, 9 minus 6. Set that equal to 0, and we'll collect our terms. We have 6x minus 3y plus 9z minus 3 equals 0, which is the same thing as 2x minus y plus 3z equals, or minus 3, plus 3z minus 1 equals 0 when we divide by 3. The sphere in 3 space with equation c1 times x squared plus y squared plus z squared, c2x, y, z, c5, uh, we'll see 4z plus c5, etc. equal to 0 that passes through four non-coplanar points. So we're passing through four points now is uh, given by this determinant equation. So instead of a circle, we now have a sphere because we have z squared. How about we find the equation of the sphere that passes through these four points that were given right over here. So we'll write out x squared plus y squared plus z squared. We'll write x, y, z, and one. And then squaring up each of the coordinates of the first point, adding them up, we get 13 x is 0, 3, 2 for the first point. Then for the next point, we get 3, adding them up and squaring. We get 1 minus 1, 1 for the second point. Then 5, 2, 1, 0, 1. And then 35 with 5, 1, 3. Take that determinant, set it equal to zero. I used a, a computer algebra system for this one. Got x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 4x minus 2y minus 6z plus 5 equals zero. So uh, completing the square, we get x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared plus z minus 3 squared equals 9.